Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats uh, and in this video, another video, a series of videos dealing with calculus and limits and specifically epsilon delta proofs. Uh, we're going to move ahead and leave behind uh, functions uh, that are linear and we're going to consider uh, functions that are quadratic. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to use the definition, the epsilon delta definition of a limit to show that the limit of the function x squared plus 2x minus 5 as x tends to 1, that that particular limit is, in fact, minus 2. And maybe let's just recall, first of all, the definition of a limit. So let's just recall. So recall our definition of a limit. Uh, the definition says something like this. It says uh, the function. So we were given a function. So let's say the function, function f approaches, approaches uh, the limit say the limit L near A, okay, if for each and every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero. Okay, so someone gives us an epsilon greater than zero, we need to find the delta greater than zero uh, such that for all x, for each and every x satisfying, satisfying the condition that the absolute value of x minus a is greater than zero and is less than the delta that we found, okay, that this particular fact has to imply that the absolute value of f of x minus a is less than, is less than epsilon, okay? So in our case, okay, in this particular case here, okay, so in our case, what we need to show is, uh, we need to show that for each and every epsilon greater than zero, that there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for each and every x satisfying, okay, satisfying these two properties, uh, that zero is less than the absolute value of x minus, well, in this case, we want to calculate the limit of this function as x tends to one, so a, so we need to calculate this limit near a, okay, and a is, well, the x is tending to one, so near one specifically, uh, so in our case, uh, a is equal to 1. So for each and every x that satisfies that the absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than 0 and less than delta, uh, needs to imply that f of x, that's the absolute value of f of x, which is, in our case, it's x squared plus 2x minus 5 minus, <coughs> sorry, that should, be, that, that, lim that should be L here, the limit L, okay? Minus L, uh, so it should be minus the minus two, okay, that that needs to be less than less, less than epsilon. So if someone gives us an epsilon greater than zero for the limit to exist, we need to be able to find a delta greater than zero such that for all x within the range, for all x, okay, satisfying this condition, okay, uh, that the x's minus one are less than this delta that we found. So that needs to imply that the function minus its limit is less than epsilon. So what we need to do is we need to find this particular delta. Okay? That's the most important thing is to find the delta. So what we're going to do is this, is we're going to start off with this implication and just recall that this here is the premise of the implication and this here is the conclusion of the implication. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to look at the, see what we need to satisfy is we need to take, we need to find, we need to go from the premise to the conclusion using deductive logic. Uh, and so what we need to do is let's have a look at the conclusion and see can we find a particular delta, yeah, uh, that this particular x minus 1, that x minus 1 is actually less than. So let's take the conclusion. So let's find an appropriate, an appropriate, appropriate delta, okay? So we'll start with the conclusion. So start with the conclusion. So let's start with the conclusion. So from the conclusion, we have that the absolute value of the function minus L has to be less than epsilon, which was given, okay? So we know the epsilon, there it is there. So what does this say? So th therefore we have, therefore in our case, we have that the absolute value of X squared plus two X minus five minus minus two has to be less than epsilon. And this implies uh, that the absolute value of x squared plus 2x minus 5 plus 2 
needs to be less than epsilon. And what does this tell us? Well, this implies that the absolute value of x squared plus 2x <clears throat> minus 5 plus 2 gives us minus 3 needs to be less than epsilon. And we can factor this particular quadratic. This implies that the absolute value of I don't forget, we're, we're always trying to get, when we do this reduction here from the conclusion, we want to get back to something that looks like this here. So we really need to get uh, this piece here that's sandwiched between the delta and the zero. So we need to get the absolute value of x minus 1 somewhere in here, which comes true naturally because the factors of x squared plus 2x minus 3 are, in fact, x minus 1 times x plus 3. Okay? So now we know from, from our conclusion that the absolute value of x minus 1 times x plus 3 must be less than epsilon. Now, what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the absolute value